Welcome to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Looking for inspiration for your life and your wine glass? This is your podcast. Here's Kirsten. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wines and Wonders. I am so happy that you've decided to listen to us today. I am really interested in this woman who is sitting across, no, not like that, but I'm interested. (laughs) I always, not like that, but I have Kathleen Barlow here, a financial advisor with Raymond James Financial and also a very good friend of mine. And she and I have known each other for about, I'd say five years now or so. And she is quite an instrumental person in my life. So welcome, Kathleen. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) Happy to have you here in this interesting time that we're Mm -hmm. all going through. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you be a part of this show is we always are focusing on ways to uplift ourselves Mm -hmm. and others Mm -hmm. and tricks and tools that we can take into our lives as we go through the challenges, and certainly all of us are facing a big challenge right now in many ways, aside from the fact that maybe you'll get this virus. I mean, it's, that's That's not even, we, some of us are facing things that have nothing to do with the virus, but we are all in a challenging situation right now. So as I thought about who are the people I wanted around me and who have given me the advice that has helped me through my life, I thought of you. And so mm-hmm. that's why I brought you in. So I want to give you a little background uh, as a listener out there of how I found Kathleen. <laughs> so she and I are a part of a women's business network. And I was uh, relatively new in the network and she stood up at one point and said that she was a financial planner and she was going to be doing these financial Fridays. And anybody who wanted to learn more about finance and the stock market and portfolios and all of these words that I had never learned what they really meant, if they wanted to come, she would buy that person a tea or a coffee and she would explain in human normal terms what all this was without all of the judgment that I often felt when I was with other financial planners that typically would be talking to one or other of my husbands, never to me. (laughs) And there was good reason for that as well, because I really wasn't looking into it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I show up at one of her financial Fridays and she's got crayons and pencils and coloring stuff out and these these papers <laughs> and i i thought well this is going to be different and i was shown an exercise that changed my life financially and so kathleen maybe why don't you start with where you found this exercise what did you think this was going to do with people hearing about it and yeah. going through it yeah the you know you talked about in the beginning that how impactful this was for you and it was as impactful for you as it was for me when i first found the exercise there is a woman financial advisor in portland oregon who wrote a book called wild money And I found the book on Amazon. The woman's name is Luna Jaffe. She's a wonderful financial advisor. And the first chapter of the book goes through this exercise. And when I was beginning my practice, this really helped me understand my relationship with money. And that's the basis for the process is what is your individual relationship with money? And maybe how can you improve it if it needs to be improved? So I did the exercise myself first because I went through the book and thought, holy cow, if this is as impactful for me, how ca- how impactful can it be for all of the people that I'm about to meet and help with their money, right? And so that's how it came to fruition. When you were looking at this whole book, did you just think, who am I? Why should I be doing that? This woman's already written this book. Why would I, you know, why would I use her stuff? Who am I? I just was curious if you had any of that going on. So many many of us do. (laughs) Yeah. So I did it first and then I called her and emailed her and said, 
would you talk to me? And she, very graciously, she did. And she said, I wrote this so people can use it. So use it. And so she gave me that thumbs up, right? But what really, for me, how I kind of got past that in addition to talking to her was it really resonated with me. And I thought, this is so great. And I give her credit all the time, but the use of the process has been really impactful for the people that I have met and the people that I work with. So truly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it changed my financial life in such a big way, and it was such a simple exercise. So I'm, I'd like to give a gift, because with everybody right now facing all sorts of different challenges, and many of them financial in our mm-hmm. lives, I wanted to have you take them through this exercise. Sure. So if you are listening, perhaps move on to one of our other podcasts and leave this one for when you can listen with what Kathleen's going to set you up with here (laughs) as tools, because this is one that we don't want you to do while you're driving, please. (laughs) If you're on your way to work. Although many of us are not on our way to work and we've got plenty of time (laughs) at the dining room table these days. So will you please guide us through this, an example of this? Yeah. So first everyone has to understand that they have some sort of relationship with money. And a lot of our relationships come from who we grew up with, whether it be our parents, our grandparents, aunts and uncles, whatever, who had influenced with us or to us uh, as growing up. So I always use kind of examples for my life. My dad used to say, pay yourself first, but never expanded on it. So I, I never really had an idea what that meant. I'm like, well, you know, of course I'm paying myself first. I get a paycheck, but it, I didn't connect it to savings and that's what he meant, but he didn't really expand on it. So I had no idea. And my mother used to say, we don't have a money tree in the backyard. So for me, that was scarcity and lack. And I have carried that. And I have also sucked that back in when I know when I'm almost about to say it to my child. I'm like, Oh my God. (laughs) So sit and think about what are those things that your parents used to tell you and see if that is similar to your story or your relationship. So before the process, if you're going to sit down and do this process, think about those things and maybe jot down what what are the, what did they say or maybe what they didn't say, right? Maybe nothing was said. So there's a big blank slate and you're like, I don't have any idea, right? I remember you pointing out a story. Mm. I was talking talking to you about a story that I didn't even know was my family story. Oh, right. I had a husband who brought home money. Yeah. <laughs> who was a ski instructor at the time and he brought home money and he had it. Someone had tipped him very well and he put these $100 bills on the kitchen counter and was like counting them out in front of the kids. Because he was excited about it. He was excited. It was a great tip. Yeah. And I grabbed, (laughs) grabbed the money off the counter. I mean, like in horror. And I grab it and I put it back in his hands. And I said, we don't show money. We don't talk about money to kids. Right. And how old was your daughter then? Oh, well, th- she, oh, th- maybe the three of them. No, no, no. The littlest. Ten. No, I had three kids at that point. Oh, you so did. they were 15, 12 and seven. Mm. And he's so happy. And I'm like, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about money in front of the kids. And it was like, oh, and you said you looked at me like, wow. <laughs> right. It's a great way to teach your kids about money. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> again, Blank slate because your father and mother never talked about money. Correct. Yeah. So if you'd like to do the process, grab some crayons, better to be as colorful as you can, and a blank piece of paper. And the process is you sit down and you draw what your relationship with money looks like. And I caution everyone to don't overthink it. I hear Nine times out of 10, I'm not artistic or I can't draw. It doesn't matter. What does it look like? I don't care if it's a stick figure and a bucket and 
a sun, you know, <laughs> something. So I just urge you to just take 10 minutes and what does it look like? And then draw it. Okay. So I would suggest you pause this podcast if you're doing the exercise. Okay. So grab some pens, follow Kathleen's directions. Don't overanalyze and draw. And before you start, I'll give you two examples just to get your creative juices going. So one workshop I did, I had a woman who was married very young. She was about 19 and got divorced when she was 40, right before she met me and began this workshop. And she never had a bank account, never paid a bill, never had a credit card, none of that. So when she got divorced, she had to start from scratch at 40. Wow. Yeah. And so her picture was her in a classroom and the teacher was writing a different language on the board. <laughs> and right. that was her interpretation of money is a different language and I don't understand it. Uh-huh. Right? Another woman got paid on commission and it was very sporadic and she could not plan because she never knew when it was coming in. And her picture was her standing in front of a bunch of balls that were bouncing all over the place, <laughs> which represented the money and chaos. Oh, so great. two two very different stories, but kind of ideas of this is how they interpret it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So guys, put us on pause. And when we come back after the pause, have your, your drawing in front of you. And we'll talk about the next step. All right. Hope that went well. Yeah. <laughs> And I will, I will start with my own drawing that I remember distinctly because it changed my life. Yes. So uh, before you yeah, start please. with your story, yes. I'll give you... Okay. <laughs> Wait, this is all about me, I know. Kathleen. Kind of the, from the two women who had those oh, stories, yes, right? Yes. So one of them, the one with the commission, because of the chaos... It kind of in addition to her drawing, she had no arms on her body. So it was just her body. And so when we talked about it, that was control for her. She's like, I have no control. And so that's how that was like, we talked about it and said, how can we interpret that? And what, what can we do about the control? Right? So you've got these two people who yep. you're saying had done these drawings. And now that we all are familiar with them, our listener is looking at a drawing mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So how can you help this person analyze what they're seeing so in a general way? In this atmosphere, I'm going to go to the next step so that they can, this helps somebody analyze it all by themselves. Okay. Okay. Great. So the next step is make one change to your picture to make it better. So in our two examples, the woman with the commission drew arms <laughs> on her and, and made the arms go around the balls uh-huh. and the arms for her represented me as her financial uh, advisor. Okay. So she needed help mm-hmm. and admitted that she needed help to control and figure out how to plan that for her was life changing. Mm-hmm. Um, the other woman changed the language on the board to English. Oh, yeah. And what it was for her was I've got to learn Mm -hmm. and I'm going to go through the process and I'm going to learn. Excellent. And that was, I had a similar experience back to me now, please. Yes. Um, (laughs) thank you. Um, I had a, so I had drawn my, I felt like there was always money coming into my life. I'm very lucky that way. I always feel like money is coming in. There's money coming in and I drew my little self with a happy face But then what I drew over my head was an umbrella and I had all this money coming down from the sky, but it would hit the umbrella and roll off the sides. It was like, yeah, it came, but it didn't get to me. It was falling off the sides. I didn't know what to do. It was just passing through, if you will. And then when you said change one thing, I realized that I needed, and like the woman with all the balls, I needed someone to help me. This is not something that I want to be good at. I don't want to learn the language. I don't want to get good at this. I want to find people who are helpful with me. And it's not the person who makes me feel uncomfortable in an office and belittled because I don't know what a, you know, whatever kind of stock they're trying to talk to me about. 
it's someone who will take the time to un- help me understand, but it's not necessarily that I'm the one having to get into the trenches and know what investments I need to make. I There are people out there that love studying this stuff. So what I did is I drew little people, you know, like you see the little like angel on your shoulder. It's like the angel on one <laughs> yes. shoulder and the devil on the other. So I drew people on my shoulders to help me. And that allowed me to feel like that was I was going to still have the rain coming down or, or the money coming in, but they were going to help me catch it, in essence, those people there. Yeah. So that would help me. And embracing that you need help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. What do you see so from a lot of the people? A, a lot of what comes out of these pictures. Mm-hmm. So two, two pronged, if you will. Mm-hmm. One is looking for the help that you need. But the other one is just looking at it. Oh, not shielding yourself. Yes, because generally women tend to put their blinders on with money. Mm -hmm. And this process is really interesting for women to do because it enables them to look at it. Like, Mm -hmm. what, what are my... What are my strengths and what are my weaknesses with this? And what's the one fix? What's one fix, right? The other impactful piece is doing it as a couple. Oh. So if you have a partner mm-hmm. that you're going through life with and you share money, it is an amazing process to, to draw these pictures because nine times out of 10, the pictures are vastly different. Of course. Right. And so it enables people to have a conversation. I had one young couple do it as clients and we had an hour session on their expectations to each other because they had no idea. I didn't know you were thinking that way. Oh, I didn't know that you were thinking that way. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Can I help? So that's also a really good way. If you're doing this today and you have a partner, have your partner do it and then talk about it. And talk about what your changes are and maybe how can you help each other with the changes? I mean, I I can compare this kind of a little bit to losing weight. I can tell you that when I feel Mm. like I'm gaining weight and I just kind of don't go to the scale, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to do anything, anything, and I just ignore it. And then when I finally, something happens, someone will say something or I will put on a pair of pants that I used to fit and don't fit anymore, which probably is many of my closet right now with call this lockdown and COVID and cooking I've been doing. But then something happens and I'll, I'll say, okay, that's it. And I step on the scale. And as soon as I can step on the scale and get that number, it's like, number one, it's never as bad as I think it is ever, right. ever. And then it's like, Somehow I've gained control of it by just knowing about it. And right. then I can move it. Such forward. a great analogy. Yeah, it just, yeah. it helps me that way. So this is like that. It's yeah, like money is the same. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this looking at this financial Friday that I got to participate in with you is, was so helpful. Mm. And what, one of the other things I went to another financial Friday and you were doing this and this was a couple years later as well. I mean, I mm-hmm. went to many of them, but you brought this out again. And I thought, well, you know, I've already done this. And you said, no, 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 draw again, (laughs) draw again. And my everything changed. I had these buckets in it. And I was now figuring out where the rain was falling into the buckets. And it was a whole completely different drawing. And Mm -hmm. I found that so interesting because I thought, well, once you have a money story, but I guess, no. every, so do you see that it's pretty common? It's, Everybody yes, changes? Yes, And, you know, we could talk about now and what's <gasps> happening with our world that people might have a different kind of money story, right? That is different from it was than three months ago. There will be some similarities, but it just can change. But the key is, is that one change in the picture. How are you going to address what's going on, whether it's today or six months ago or six months from now? So this can be a tool. I mean, I hadn't thought about sitting down and doing another one, but I should be doing this again because my entire life has completely changed with this as in terms of my business life. And so to kind of get this picture and then that little, that one thing that you can change 
is really, it was so stunning to me. That's yeah. such a part of this. Yes. And God bless the woman that wrote Luna. this. And the, God bless the fact that you got to yeah. look at, find it, yep. read it, and then take it out to more people, yeah. which yeah. is really great. It's really well, lovely. Thank you. And, and Listeners, I hope you got a lot out of Kathleen. She's going to stick with us through the second half of the show talking about wine. This changing one thing about your current perspective and making a completely different opportunity out of that one change is really what I love focusing on. It's amazing. So stay tuned. We are going to take a break and Uplift Gift is our sponsor today and we'll be right back. Stay tuned to hear what type of wine Kirsten will pair with this story right after this. Today's podcast is brought to you by my company, Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. When I had cancer, friends sent me the most amazing, wonderful gifts and cards, and they were from their hearts, and they made me feel so comforted and loved. And at the time, I was writing a column for the Huffington Post on wine pairings called Wines to Pair with Life. And so I wrote a series of articles about wines to pair with breast cancer. So in my public purview, people started contacting me saying, what should I send my friends? What were the best gifts when someone gets bad news? And finally, I just heard, you know, this message that said, this is what you need to do, Kirsten. This this is your gift out of your cancer that you can give the rest of the world. So the company, again, is Uplift Gift, and we help you support your friends and loved ones who may be far away from you, who just are getting a divorce or are dealing with a parent dying or are struggling with a new diagnosis. I realized people need help talking to others who've been given bad news. Since I've been through that experience quite a few times in my life, I feel like the Uplift Gift series of gift boxes are a perfect fit to help you support your friends. Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. Next up, Kirsten's choice for a wine to open after the show. Welcome back to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. I have Kathleen Barlow here in the studio with me in, yes, you, my office. I just need to start calling it my office. Um, Financial advisor with Raymond James Financial. And she just walked us through a, an overview, a way to take your money story, put it on paper and really understand it a little better. Maybe you could just give us a a quick high level overview of what that was again. Yeah. So taking your crayons and your paper and thinking about what is your relationship look like with money and just purely draw it, draw it. Don't think about it. Don't overthink it. And then after you've digested it, then you take the picture back again and say, what is one change I can make to this picture to make it better and see what the, what's the underlying reason for that change and what is that change for you? Great. Yeah. And then you can apply that yep. to your life. You'll know what yeah. to do. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, well, I can. So what are we drinking? So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I thought that this reminded me of a story of a wine region in Australia, and it is called the Margaret River. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Australian wine, if you think about the continent of Australia, the wine regions are mostly along the southern fifth, if you will, of the um, entire continent. And most of the volume of wine comes out of the east and the center of the continent itself. But on the western edge of Australia, near Perth, Australia, there is a region that is called the Margaret River that almost wasn't. This wasn't, it doesn't look like a good region on the surface. So over 50,000 years ago or so, the Aborigines were walking around this area and growing what they needed to grow to live. But Europeans arrived there in the 1830s or so. They did not bring vines with them in this case. And it took until the late 60s, 1960s, And a cardiologist doctor from Perth went into the area and was looking at the region because he loved wine. 
and he was trying to figure out a way to grow wine close to his home, which was in Perth. The problem was, it, and it was a big problem in that this area in the Margaret River is cooler and it gets major heavy rainfall all winter long. Awful rain, awful rain, awful rain. Well, awful rain means bad things for vine grapes. It does not work. The You want a vine grape to actually, or a vine that's producing grapes to actually struggle. You want it to not get enough water. So it starts searching for water. In this case, obviously, there's no way this is going to start searching for water. So there he is. He's trying to figure out, Dr. Coolity, trying to figure out what he can do. What can he do to make this work? Because he's really loved wine. And he realized that if the soil so he looked at it in that one different way. Just like you're saying, change your financial picture one way. And he looked at that region in a completely different way. And he said, where are the areas where the soil has good drainage? So that the soil will just allow it to drain away from the vines. So the vines still are not getting inundated with water and they're able to have that struggle because the drainage and he found some beautiful areas in Margaret River to grow wine grapes and the fun story about this region is he started planting grapes at a winery called Voss Felix V-A-S-S-E Felix just like the cat, if you're my age, <laughs> he likes the cat, the wonderful girl. And um, in 1967, and so I am pairing today, and I'll come back with the actual wine, but I'm going to pair a Voss Felix wine to this wonderful example of changing one thing about a story to make it a completely different outcome. So what he did by changing that soil, what thinking about it differently, this region, which only contributes about 3% of Australia's total wine production, it commands over 20% of the premium Australian wine market. So they are growing some of the best wines in Australia in this region that on the surface looked like it wasn't a good region at all for wine. So it's kind of fun, isn't it? That, yeah, it's a great Yeah, really, combo. really fun. So stay tuned. We are going to be right back with our specific wine to pair with this great exercise that Kathleen has brought in today. Stay tuned to hear what type of wine Kirsten will pair with this story right after this. Thank you again to our sponsor, Uplift Gift, for helping us today pay for this podcast. So the wine, the specific wine that I've chosen to pair with this today is Voss Felix Chardonnay. It is out of specifically, it's appellated or it's, it's grown exactly in the Margaret River region. It is actually designed in a very fresh way. It only has a small amount of the percentage of wine that they make. They only age a small amount in oak. So, for example, in the 2017 vintage of the Voss Felix Chardonnay, only about 6% was put into oak to age. So only about 6% of that got that vanilla-y, butterscotchy kind of flavoring to it, which sometimes can, can affect our Chardonnays by way of making them almost unsuitable with foods, unless the food itself is smoked or buttery and that kind of thing. Like a lobster, for example, is great with an oak Chardonnay or a smoked salmon. But other than that, it gets really hard when you've got that heavy an oak on the Chardonnay. So they only, in the 17, they only used about 6% of the volume of juice that they produced to put, and they put that into oak. So this winery, when their grapes aren't, they don't get quite ripe enough sometimes, they'll be heavy in acid. 
And so they will use a process that's called malolactic fermentation. And when you think of malic, malic acid, grapes have malic acid in them. And Granny Smith apples. Have you ever bitten into a Granny yeah. Smith? Yeah. And it, you just you, like, yep. you can think Make about it face. and you're right now, my, my mouth is watering because it's just thinking of the acid in that. Yeah. So that's malic acid. And then when I say lactic acid, what do you think about? Like, I don't know, milk? Yeah. Yeah. Like milk. Oh, okay. Perfect. Like, yeah. cause lactose is at the same thing, right? So mm-hmm. you think of milk products, cream, that kind of thing. Yeah. So when you use a bacteria that is, it, they actually introduce a bacteria into the vat with the grape juice and the bacteria eat the malic acid and poop out lactic acid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's probably not something that many winemaker or wine <laughs> educators. I've seen that cartoon. <laughs> I know. It's really funny. So what happens is that really biting acid mm. is turned into something that's softer. Smoother. Smoother, yeah. softer, creamier versus yeah. that biting. So that is what malolactic fermentation is when you see that on a label. And this group chooses to use it. And so in 2017, it's the second year in a row that they used malolactic fermentation. So depending which vintage you're drinking, they may or may not use that. Mm. So anyway, I am a big fan of the Voss Felix Chardonnay. And if I remember correctly, oh yeah. So this is like, this comes in if you're looking for this in the stores in the low 20s. Um, It's a nice Chardonnay. It's got some beautiful food pairing personality. And it was, you know, it was really started by Dr. Coolity, who discovered a way to switch one thing about the Margaret River and found soil that was good, had good drainage and was able to create a wine region there. So anything as we wrap things up, Kathleen, that you'd want to add? So I love the wine story and I just think it, it it's just a good kind of moral, like look at what you can do with one thing, one change. One change. Yeah. We'll call this episode one, one change. change. Thank you so much for coming yeah, it in. Yeah, was really great to be here. Thanks. We'll see you next time on Wines and Wonders. If you've got a moment, please leave a review on your podcast station of choice. And thank you for tuning in to Wines and Wonders.